Good day class, so I apologize again for the late upload of your uh, specimen collection in laboratory diagnosis for viruses part 2 since uh, the same situation nung sa BC concepts in virology, I have problem with my audio. So now we will try to cover the second part and we will discuss the laboratory diagnosis for viruses. So for the laboratory method, so we will discuss four basic classification. So first, we will discuss the direct detection of the virus in clinical specimen using microscopy. Second is the use of nucleic acid-based de detection that includes PCR. Uh, third, uh, isolation of viruses and cell cultures. And last will be serologic acid. For serologic acid, I'll just gonna introduce uh, basic concepts because I believe that this topic will be discussed thoroughly on your serology. So let's start with your microscopy. So for cytology and histology, we usually use a uh, bright field microscope to observe the uh, cell characteristic. So the primary requirement for this one, specifically for uh, virologic analysis, you need to have a good background of your histology. Why? Because you need to compare the normal cells from the pathologic cells. So for your reference, you can use uh, your Mahon page 749 for the presence of characteristic viral inclusions. And some of the inclusions listed uh, that is very common is you have your CMV, adenovirus, papillomavirus, uh, which is stained with your H and E. So cytopathic effect or CPE are indicated by the changes in host cell morphology, which are caused by target infecting virus. The common visual observation of the host cells are swelling or sinkage, rounding, lysis, plaques, clamping, syncytia formation, and inclusion. So if you can observe in this picture class, this is a typical inclusion of your CMV uh, using your HME stain. So the characteristic is uh, described as an owl eye inclusion. So if you can observe this one. So uh, an owl eye inclusion is actually a syncytia formation where two form or two cells are combined. On the other picture in the class, it's the characteristic of your monocytes uh, infected with your CMV. So in this picture, uh, this is a typical characteristic of your papilloma virus inclusions. So if you can observe papilloma or DNA viruses, so therefore inclusion should be observed on your nucleus part. So nucleus are highly dense. Uh, stained with your H and E, so therefore, ito na part is the inclusions of your, uh, and this one, if kita nyo class, the dense color blue or purple color, that's the inclusion of your papilloma viruses. So inclusion usually appear when the virus is really, kung saan siya release So for example, in this case, papilloma viruses, they are DNA viruses, so therefore, you can observe the inclusion on the DNA part. Ah, sorry, class, on the nucleus part because they are eDNA virus. And uh, using a cervical pap smear naman class showing the human papilloma virus infected with squamous cells. So the general uh, the typical characteristic of your cervical pap smear uh, showing a human papilloma virus is folding of your squamous cells. So nagpo-fold siya class. So this is a typical characteristic of your pap smear with uh, human papilloma virus. So Zhang smear test is a simple and cheap test that relies on viewing and interpretation of single cell, which is your cytology. So Arnold Zhang described the technique in 1947 to distinguish various blistering conditions if you can observe on the picture. The blistering condition is usually caused by your varicella zoster virus and your herpes simplex virus, specifically type 1, highlight natin class, 
pagkita naman, ah, sorry class, uh, erase ko muna, and then highlight ko to, your hepat hepatitis, sorry class, you have herpes simplex virus 1, eto, lagay na natin class type 1. Type 1, bakit? Kasi, the lesion is observed on the upper. So, pag upper extremity siya class, usually herpes simplex virus 1. Pag herpes simplex virus 2, lower siya. Like for example, genital, uh, genital uh, herpes. So, type 2 naman siya class. And then for your virus zella zoster virus, okay, virus zella zoster virus, this is the causative agent of your chicken pox naman class. Okay, causative agent of your chicken pox. Okay, specifically your varicella. Your suster is actually the causative agent of your shingles in adult. Chicken pox pag sa bata, shingles pag sa adult. Adult pag usually reoccurring na yung uh, ano, uh, chicken pox. Okay? And then uh, we collect it using this one. Like script tayo. And then after that one, we observe. For example, for herpes, we observe inclusion body. Ito yung itsura niya class. And we term that one caldry type A. So that's your caldry type A. We also have uh, inclusion bodies for rabies. And we called it negri bodies. So the negri bodies, if you can observe this one. Ito naman yung negri bodies class. Kita nyo to. So, this is a neuron and then this one is in negri bodies. Negri bodies is the infectious uh, virion of your uh, rabies virus. So, that's a typical example of your inclusion bodies produced by your rabies virus which is under your rhabdoviridae uh, RNA uh, virus. And we are done with your bright field microscopy. Always remember, class, that if we will use your bright field microscopy in order for us to uh, appreciate the inclusion, we need to use stain. And the, the, most, the most common stain used is H and E. The next type of microscopy class is the use of direct fluorescence assay or DFA and indirect fluorescence assay. So from the name itself, and I believe that this one is discussed already, either on your EUBF and or your serology, uh, the direct fluorescence assay uses fluorescence as a dye. So therefore, the expect expected color reaction depends on the color of the dye. If kung green yung dye, therefore, the production will be green. Kung red naman yung ginamat na dye, so therefore, the dye will produce a red color. You can also be uh, can, this can also be a flexible tool to detect a viral agent in the clinic, clinical specimen. So this is a typical example of E positive uh, immunofluorescence test for rabies virus antigen. So the one with the green fluoresce, fluoresce it means that uh, there is a present of antigen. So kung present yung antigen, so therefore present ang virus. So therefore positive yung patient. And last, under your microscopy is your electron microscope. An electron microscope is a microscope that uses a beam of accelerated electrons as a source of illumination. Electron microscopes are used to investigate the ultra structure of a wide range of biological and inorganic specimens, including microorganisms, cells, large molecules, biopsy samples, metals, and crystals. In medical virology, the electron microscopy is used to those viruses that are uh, not readily, uh, that, that does not readily grow on your cell culture. So the electron microscope uses negative staining. So therefore, you need to have, uh, the specimen should be placed on a grid. So this is a grid. And then stain with your potassium phosphate tungstate and or uh, uranyl acetate. Yeah, sorry, class, uranyl acetate. Pakit correct na lang naman to class, uranyl acetate. So, you have your potassium, phosphatang state, or uranyl acetate. Okay, take note, class, um, electron microscope, gumagamit ng negative staining.
So these are the examples of viruses that can be viewed using your electron microscope. So we have noroviruses, norwalk viruses, coronaviruses, astroviruses, herpes simplex viruses, measles, and JC polyoma viruses. So these are uh, viruses that you can actually observe. In, for example, spike proteins. So if you can observe here, this is the spike protein of your coronavirus, and then this is the electron microscope. Although, like for example, coronaviruses, we can actually cultivate this one in culture media because there are now uh, good culture media for the isolation of your coronavirus. But we cannot actually observe the structure of your uh, virus in the cell culture. However, we can observe the cytopathic effect. So what are the problems with electron microscope? Of course, first, it's expensive. Maybe in the Philippines, around cost around like uh, 300 to 400,000 just to have a complete setup. And then it's an uh, expensive maintenance because I know that the electron microscope requires, uh, there are some part of the electron microscope that requires weekly maintenance, monthly, and then quarterly. And then uh, it requires experienced observer, of course. If, even like us, medical technologies, after we graduate, we need to have a good training for this one. Why? Kasi mahal yung equipment. Kasi kung hindi ka marunong magmanipulate and then magmaintain, then it will be wasteful for the equipment, specifically your electron microscope, kung masisira siya. And then uh, sensitivity often low. This is somewhat true. Why? Because microscopy have have the same uh, sensitivity and it's often low. Like for example, DFS. Kung mag DFS ka, diba, uh, there would be a low chance of catching the parasite. Kaya nagko-collect, kaya nag tayo ng three times so we can uh, uh, really report if kung no parasite observed talaga siya. It's the same with your electron microscope. So the manner of preparing the sample, specifically in viruses, might possibly, we cannot catch the virus. Therefore, we cannot observe the virus at the electron microscope. Then possibly we can uh, report it negative. So usually with electron microscope, it should be paired with uh, other molecular tests, for example, PCR, to really confirm uh, if kung may virus talaga siya or wala. And now we will move to the third part of your uh, methods of detecting your viruses. So that's your molecular techniques. So what are the advantages of using a molecular test? Though in this Part class, I will just only introduce this one because we will try to cover this one during your summer sa ano, uh, molecular diagnostics ninyo na course. So what are the advantages of using a molecular test? So these are the following advantages class. So first, you have high sensitivity, of course, because theoretically can detect the presence of tama class only single organism. So, kahit may isa ka lang na organism, it, the, the PCR or molecular test can actually amplify that type of organism as long as you have the correct primers. And then, second, high specificity. So, it can actually detect specific genotypes, can determine drug resistance, and can predict virulence. Uh, with this one, we will discuss this one each and I'm gonna show you tools on how to identify genotypes and our resistance pagdating natin sa molecular diagnostics. And uh, I think this is the most important uh, advantage for a molecular test is the speed. Okay, quicker than the traditional culturing for certain organisms. So imagine you just collect sample. After you collect sample, mag RNA extra ka lang. RNA extraction may uh, take around 30 to 1 hour, depending on the number of samples. So for example, 1 hour. Then, kasi baguhan pa tayo. <coughs> so after one, <coughs> sorry class. So after 1 hour, na nag uh, RNA extra ka, then you will perform PCR. PCR may, cost, may take around 
like one hour. So imagine two hours, may, sub, may, may result ka na kagad. Compare with the culture. With the culture, the minimum uh, uh, the minimum number of days na pwede mo siyang i-observe is seven days. And then the, num the highest number naman to observe the culture kung positive talaga sa or hindi is one month. So imagine that one, mag-aanday ka pa ng one month just to uh, confirm that the patient is positive with this organism. So possibly, baka uh, pag-antay mo ng one month, patay na pasyente mo. Diba? So it would be uh, better for us medical laboratory scientists to uh, perform a laboratory diagnostic tool that is uh, fast as well as have high sensitivity and specificity. And molecular tests such as PCR can provide one. Then we'll move to the disadvantages of using a molecular test. First, of course, it's expensive. Uh, imagine that using RNA extraction or DNA extraction alone costs around like 50 to 80,000. Uh, for PCR reagent alone costs around 80 to 100,000. So therefore, that's pesos class. So therefore, it is somewhat expensive. Second disadvantage is that, uh, remember with the previous slide that I mentioned that one of the advantages of your molecular test is high specificity. So with the advantage also class, pose a great disadvantage. How? Because it will miss a new organism unless sequencing is done, which is actually not practical in clinical laboratory. Bakit? Kasi sa pagdating sa clinical laboratory, anong nire-receive natin na sample? Tama, anun. So therefore, class, we don't have any idea kung ano yung organism na possible na andun sa sample natin. Compare with bacteriology is that when we receive a sample, we can actually plate that one to primary culture media. So that's your BAP. Mac and then have your chalk. So, pag may tutubo sa BAP, saka sa chalk, walang tutubo sa MAC, then we can actually presentably identify the, 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 the possible organism is gram-positive. Tama? Bakit? Kasi walang tumubo sa MAC-ONKI. Kasi sa MAC-ONKI, meron siyang inhibitor, which is crystal violet, that inhibits gram-positive organism. Only gram-negative organism can grow. So, that's the case of your bacteriology. So, pag pagdating natin sa uh, virology, then we don't have any idea kung anong type of uh, virus siya, then it would be very difficult for us to uh, use a molecular test. Kaya, uh, we need to use first, uh, in the case of virology, we need to use first uh, cell culture. And then, sa cell culture, pag nag-positive siya, for example, inclusion bodies. And then, Siyempre, inclusion bodies are not 100% uh, directed to that specific organism or virus. So, therefore, we can actually use molecular tests for confirmation. And then, if kung na-amplify, then therefore, we can identify and report the virus. And maybe a problem with mixed culture, okay, would have to assay for all organisms causing that infection. So, again, it's not the same with the bacteriology. So, pagdating sa molecular test, uh, pag may mixed uh, culture ka, then therefore we need to separately identify each virus as first and then we need to confirm uh, it individually using a molecular test using a specific primer. And then we'll discuss later the primers. So before we will dig in more on the molecular uh, test principles, let's review the uh, DNA, the central dogma of life. So DNA is a double-sided linear. Okay, uh, one end of each strand has a five prime carbon phosphate, and one end has a free uh, three prime OH group. So Ito yung itsura niya, class. So, meron daw tayong 5 prime at saka meron din tayong 3 prime end. Ayan. So, ganyan yung itsura niya. The two strands are in parallel position and with respect to each other. So, tinatawag siyang anti-parallel. Ito naman, class, anti-parallel. Okay? So, isang strand, tapos meron siyang anti-parallel. Okay? And then, adenines, always base pair with timing. Sulat natin yan, class. 
So you have your adenine, base pair with your thiamine, and then you have your guanines, always base pair with your cytosine. Guanine to cytosine. Alam naman natin to class, na pag na natin to sa cytogenetics natin. Then, let's move to the principle of your molecular techniques, which is target amplification. So, for target amplification, the uh, basic requirement is ADNA. So, highlight natin class, DNA daw yung uh, requirement. So, the number of copies of the DNA is increased. So, for example, you were able to isolate one organism. And that one organism contains at least one DNA. And then, one DNA can be amplified and be increased. To understand this, we must first review the activity of the enzyme DNA polymerase that is used to amplify the DNA. So, on the next slide, we will discuss the, uh, shortly discuss the central dogma of life, specifically your DNA polymerase. So, DNA polymerase cannot initiate synthesis on its own. So, therefore, the, the enzyme DNA polymerase requires a primer. So, a primer uh, is a set of a single-sided piece of DNA that is complementary to a unique region of the sequence to be amplified. So, for example, in this case, this is your DNA. And then, yung sabi dito, a primer is a single-sided piece of DNA that is complementary to a unique region. So, this will be your Primer. So, si primer didikit dito, class. Pag didikit na siya dito, then your DNA polymerase can initiate. Then, si DNA polymerase pupunta dito, kakabit siya sa first na primer, and then gagawa na siya ng complementary strand. So, for example, di ba in the previous slide, sinabi ko na A is always paired with T, and then G is always paired with C. So, for example, in this one, so ganito yung itsura niya. So this is A, A, tapos T, T, G, C, G. So pagdadaan si uh, Tini Polymerase dito class uh, with the start of your primer. So si Tini Polymerase gagawa siya ng complementary strand. So ano yung complementary ni A, T, di ba? Ni A, T, A, A. C, G, C. Tapos gagawa na siya ng double stranded. So ito na yung double stranded niya class. So that's the function of our DNA polymerase. So on the previous slide, we discussed the function of our DNA polymerase, which is a key player on the central dogma of life in humans, of course. However, in molecular tests, we don't use human, tama? We use machine. So therefore, machine have a different uh, thermal requirement compared to humans. Kasi the DNA polymerase requires 37 degrees Celsius to act optimally. Pero pagdating sa PCR machine class or any molecular uh, machines, and our diagnostic tools, they require a high temperature. So around 95 degrees Celsius, for example, for PCR. So thus, uh, DNA polymerase in human is not applicable. So anong ginagamit natin, class? We have TAC polymerase. Your TAC polymerase is a thermostable polymerase isolated from thermos aquaticus, a bacterium that lives in hot springs and hydrothermal vents. TAC polymerase is an abbreviation of your thermos aquaticus polymerase and it is often used in polymerase chain reaction or PCR since, since it is reasonably cheap and it can survive PCR conditions. So take note with this one class highlight natin, you have your thermos aquaticus, saan siya galing class? From, uh, ah, saan siya galing class? Thermos aquaticus. Tapos anong pangalan niya? TAC polymerase. Hindi DNA polymerase yung ginagamit natin class our human DNA polymerase pagdating sa uh, molecular techniques, specifically PCR. Yung ginagamit natin, TAC polymerase. So, let's move to PCR or polymerase chain reaction. It is used to amplify something found in 
in such small amounts that without PCR, it would be undetectable. So the problem with the previous uh, methods to identify your virus class is that they have a low sensitivity. So to address that one, then we have your uh, molecular techniques and that includes your PCR. Your PCR actually uses two primers, as we mentioned earlier in, in my previous slide class, that DNA polymerase and or TAC polymerase in this case will not initiate its activity unless there are no primers attached to the uh, target uh, sequence ng virus, for example. So the two primers uh, on that, 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 that binds to one strands of a double stranded DNA molecule and the other which binds to the other strand of the DNA molecule. Sorry, class. And then the DNA polymerase used is a thermostable, as discussed in the previous slide, we use a uh, TAC polymerase. So now I will introduce to you the three steps of your PCR reaction. So first is denaturation or denature. When you denature DNA, you separate it into single strands. Okay, why, sir? Why do we need to denature the DNA? Tingin nyo, class, bakit? Ayun, tama, class. Kasi, as we mentioned earlier, that we need to have primers. And primers should bind to a specific uh, part of sequence ng DNA. So if you can observe in this one class, how can the primer, how can the primer, this is the primer class, how can the primer attach to the specific sequence kung double-stranded pa siya? Tama? So anong gagawin? So dapat ma-denature muna siya. Making the double-stranded DNA to single-stranded DNA. Ayan. So in the PCR reaction, this is accomplished by heating 95 degrees Celsius for 15 seconds to 1 minute. So therefore, class, with this temperature, if we will use human DNA polymerase, the human DNA polymerase will also be degraded. So therefore, we need to use a uh, DNA polymerase that is thermostable. And uh, as mentioned in the previous slide, we have TAC polymerase. The single-stranded DNA generated will serve as a template for DNA synthesis. Next class after denaturation is annealing. Okay, to anneal is to come together. Okay, the other term term used for annealing is hybridization. So kung sa Bisaya pa class, ang hybridization and or annealing is pagdikit. Okay, sa pagdikit ng primer mo to the target sequence of your DNA. So if this one, if your primer attached to the uh, specific sequence part of your DNA, then we call that one annealing. Okay. During this stage in the PCR reaction, the primer base primer primers base pair with their complementary sequence on the single-stranded template DNA generated in the denaturation step of the reaction. So with this one, ganito lang siya class. Uh, una, the denature para mag-separate yung double-stranded to single-stranded DNA. Tapos pag-open na yung uh, sequence ng single-sided DNA mo, then your primer can uh, attach to it. So, ang tawag ng process to class is annealing or hybridization. So, after that one, pag naka-attach na ang primer sa specific sequence mo, the next uh, step will be extension class. So extension during this stage of the PCR reactions, the DNA polymerase will use DNTPs or dinitrophosphates. Uh, so, sir, ano yung mga DNTPs? Madali lang to class. Ang DNTPs naman class, so you have uh, C, cytosine, thymine, adenine, at saka guanine. So those are your DNTPs. Okay, your use DNTPs to synthesize your DNA complementary to the template DNA. To do this, DNA polymerase extend the primers that annealed in the annealing step of the reaction. 
the optimal temperature of Rattac polymerase is 72 degrees Celsius. So therefore, the temperature used is 72 degrees Celsius. Ayun, class. So, in this picture, pag na-denature na siya, denature, aniline, ah, sorry, class, ah, tama, aniline, hybridization, and then extension. The extension is where the uh, TAC polymerase will start its activity by uh, providing the complementary uh, DNTPs of the uh, sequence. So, for example, i-enlarge natin to class. Ha? Ito na part, enlarge natin to. So, ganito yung itsura niya. Tapos, uh, then ito yung primer. Nakadikit na dito yung primer. Tapos, ito siya, E, E, tapos D, C, G. Tapos, may mga free-floating na E, 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 T, T, G, G, C. Okay, floating yan, nakasali na as part of your reagent. And then, after that one class, so, pag may DNA polymerase ka na didikit sa primer mo dito, then iti-check ni TAC polymerase kung ano yung best base pair na kailangan. So, for example, A, ah, kailangan ko ng T. Kukuha niya ng T, lalagay niya dito. Tapos, after niya, ah, kailangan ng T, kailangan ng A, kailangan ng G, kailangan ng C. Tapos, gagawa na siya ng double stranded DNA. And then, babalik na naman to the first phase which is your denaturation with, tatanggalin na naman yan, tapos ilang cycle na naman yung ma-proproduce. So, the combination of denaturation, aniline, and extension constitute to one cycle. Okay, remember this one class ha, pag isang cycle, dapat kompleto si denaturation, aniline, and extension. So, most PCR reaction uses 25 to 30 of these cycles to amplify the target DNA up to a million times to the starting concentration. So imagine you only have one DNA and then from that one DNA, from 25 to 30 cycles can actually produce million copies of your DNA. Next is the PCR types. For this presentation, I will only introduce to you the most common, which is the two. There are a lot of types of your PCR, but in molecular, uh, but in virology, we usually use this one. You have your conventional PCR, which is used as agarose gel for detection of PCR amplification at the final phase. Take note, class. Sa final phase, kailangan daw nating ilagay sa agarose gel uh, or endpoint of the PCR reaction. So the results are seen by separating the PCR product by agarose. Uh, itidium bromide electrophoresis. So, therefore, class, meron tayong tinatawag na thermal cycler. Ito, thermal cycler. Tapos sa thermal cycler, dito natin nilalagay, ito yung sample natin, nilalagay natin yung thermal cycler, yung thermal cycler, dito yung denaturation, uh, aniling, at saka extension, temperature. Then, after nyan, yung sample mo, ito, Okay, ilalagay mo siya sa agarose gel. Tapos yung agarose gel mo, ganyan yung itsura niya. Tapos lalagay mo siya sa electrophoresis. Ito, electrophoresis yan. Okay, and then ito yung control for example. So yung control mo, meron siyang bond dito. Okay, pag may bond dito, meaning positive yan. Okay, so for example, you have your sample 1. Sa sample 1 mo, may bond ka dito. Pero it's not similar to this one, so therefore negative. And then, ito, for example, may bond siya dito. So, therefore, comparable to the control. So, it means positive. So, ano ibig sabihin ng conventional PCR? Yung conventional PCR, pag nag-report tayo, class, pag nag-report tayo, quality. So, sir, ano ibig sabihin ng quality? Tama, class. Pag quality, positive at saka negative lang. Compare with the real-time PCR class that uh, the real-time detection of amplification by use of your probes, detection of fluorescence in shun. They eliminate the small class. Okay? Pag real-time PCR, wala na siyang agarose gel. Bakit? Because, uh, for example, you have your sample here. Yung sample mo, ilalagay mo na siya sa PCR machine. Ito naman yung PCR machine natin, class. The PCR machine is actually connected to a laptop. Tapos yung laptop mo naman class is will produce a graph if kung uh, 
may na-amplify or wala. <coughs> so, so that's your real-time PCR. I uh, will discuss this thoroughly pagdating natin sa uh, molecular diagnosis in your uh, summer. So next class, we will discuss the uh, gold standard for laboratory methods, which is virus isolation. Under this one, we have three. So we have animal inoculation test, which is costly and only used in reference laboratory. Second is embryoated egg, which is rarely used. But I have a personal experience with this one class handling the embryoated egg when I was, uh, when I had my master's. When we have vaccinology as a subject, and then we need to prepare a vaccine for uh, influenza. And then, uh, egg inoculation test is the best method to produce a high uh, number of copies of your influenza. And later, I'll show you how to prepare that one. And of course, cell culture. By either uh, you get it from a primary cell culture line or a continuous cell line. And now we will discuss that one also later. Isa isa in attention class. So, since sa animal inoculate, inoculation test, which is not uh, performed routinely and only performed in a reference lab, we will skip that one and we will proceed to embryonated egg inoculation test. So for the embryonated egg inoculation, it used a seed viruses for the production of the majority of influenza vaccines and also identification. So take note with the term seed class, ah sorry class, take note with the term seed. Okay, in virology, we usually use the term seed, but pagdating sa bacteriology, this is equivalent to inoculation class, inoculation. Yeah. Pabida kasi yung virology class, dapat may ibang term talaga. Pero seeding and inoculation is the same. Okay? So, uh, I will seed a virus today. So, parang mong sinabi, ah, I will inoculate a virus today. So, that's seeding. Okay? So, we need to prepare a duck uh, eggs. Ayan. Uh, usually around uh, 9 days to 12 days yung age na class. Ayan. And then... Uh, if you can observe the brown one, that's a betadine para maging sterile. Tapos, uh, later papakita kung paano natin siya. I-identify kung saan part dapat natin siya. Uh, ano, tawag nito, tanggalan ng shell. So, to inoculate the specimen by inserting the needle into the hole in the shell and using a short stabbing motion, Pierce the chorealantoic membrane and inoculate 200 UL, seal and incubate the cell. So in order for us to identify kung saan yung hollow part ng duct egg mo, we need to use it under the light. Ito, common light lang naman to class. And then if we will try to identify it na ito yung hollow na part, then we can actually use a scalpel. Tapos bubutasan natin yan, pwede screw anything that you have at least basta sterile. And then after that one, nahanapin daw natin yung chorealantoic membrane. Yan. And then pag nahanap mo na yung chorealantoic membrane, then you can actually introduce your virus. So this is your influenza virus. Ayan. So you allow the virus to infect the uh, impregnated egg. And then, uh, store the viral isolate at 4 degrees Celsius, then perform hemagglutinin test that we'll show you on the, uh, after this one. So, harvesting virus from inoculated eggs with a sterile forcep, okay, gently break the shell over the air sac. Ito yung air sac class. Ito yung sabi ko kanina. And push aside the lantoic membrane with a forcep using a 10 ml pipette. Aspirate the lantuic fluid and avoiding the veins and place it in the label centrifuge too. And then later, in, after this uh, slide, we'll perform our hemagglutinin test. So when I was uh, teaching before class, we usually perform this one. Pero since it's uh, ano, it's a uh, uh, online class already, so it would be very difficult for us to perform, of course, right? Uh, 
but uh, I hope that at least the primary requirement for this one is you to appreciate the methods. And then you have your hemagglutinin assay. So hemagglutinin assay is the post-test used for egg embryonated inoculation test. So in order for you to identify if the virus really amplified is that you will use this one. So if this is a visible clamping of RBC, then therefore you were able to uh, amplify the virus. So influenza A and B able to hemabsorb in hemagglutinate guinea pig RBC. However, your para-influenza and mums only have your heme absorption. I believe that your heme agglutination assay will be discussed with your serology and it's still the same principle. So I hope that this one will be discussed to your serology. Next, you have your cell culture. This one is the most preferred one because it's easy to perform and it is easy to maintain. Uh, for conventional cell culture, you have this one. So you have a rotator. He routinely incubated in a roller drum tilted at 5 to 7 degree. Sorry, class. Mali yung ano ko ng degree. Revolve at 1 half to 1 RPM at 37 degrees Celsius. So if you have a test tube for your cell culture, then therefore it should be regularly rotated. Okay? So, pero meron din tayo mga cell culture lines later, papakita ko sa inyo uh, na plain lang siya. So, example is this one. It can be incubated also in a stationary rock. Okay, metabolism of growing cells produced uh, CO2 and acidified the medium. So therefore, class, the minimum requirement is CO2 dapat 5%. Okay, take note with this one class, 5% na CO2 yung requirement natin para mabuhay yung cell. Okay, then we have a bicarbonate buffering system that keeps, that keeps cells at a physiologic pH. And pakihighlight phenol red as a indicator. So if uh, phenol red is acidic, it will become yellow. If the cell culture media is in this color, so the pH is somewhat alkaline, which is good. Okay, always remember that acidic environment can actually be toxic to cells, so therefore, possible na mamamatay yung cell mo. So, sir, ano yung mga cases uh, na magkakaroon ng acidic environment or possible scenarios na magiging acidic environment yung culture media mo, sir. So, one example is you have a contaminant, either bacteria or fungi. I always remember, class, the cell culture media also contains glucose. So, once glucose is consumed, and then it will actually uh, release byproducts. And these byproducts can actually change the pH uh, condition of your cell culture media, making it acidic. Then therefore, pag nakita mong yellow na yung culture media mo, then at least alam mo na, ah, baka may fungi ito, and or bacteria or other contaminant. So for specimen, uh, for cell culture, the incubation requirement is at least one week to seven, one week to one month. Yeah, and so seven days up to four weeks, depending on the virus suspected. For example, in our case, a laboratory class, we usually identify uh, influenza viruses. So the maximum period of incubation is seven days. Majority of the influenza naman class, they can actually produce CPE at the at, at third day. And or kung merong CPE at the seventh day, tapos plus one lang sa what we usually do is to recede it again to another culture media to confirm if it's negative or positive. For coronavirus, uh, for cell culture, we usually have at least seven days, but majority of the coronaviruses produces CPE or cell destruction in the cell, uh, cell de destruction in the cell line. Uh, ang pinaka mabilis class is one day, ang pinaka mahaba ma na is three days. 
and then periodically inspected microscopically for the presence of virus indicated by area of dead or dying cell known called by your cytopathic effect. On the previous slide, I presented inclusions as part of your cytopathic effect. And then on the succeeding slide, I'll present the uh, destruction naman and the mode of uh, reporting in terms of uh, CPE destruction. So for the cell culture, so it's the maintenance of cells outside of the living animal for easier experimental manipulation and regulation of control. So it would be very difficult for us to, you know, use animals and or humans para lang ma-identify natin uh, sa laboratory na may virus talaga wala. But we can actually uh, isolate the cell and then make and maintain it in the laboratory. So there are categories of cell cultures. So we have primary cell line, low passage cell line, and continuous cell line. Isa isa in natin to class. So how to obtain your primary culture? Pag sinami natin primary culture, primary cell line, tayo talaga yung kukuha ng cell from the source. So for example, in this case, animals. So una daw class, dapat natin acquisition of sample. So for example, pwedeng rat, rabbit, horse, etc. And then isolation of tissue from the acquisition of your sample, dissection and or disaggregation, and then culture after seeding into culture vessels. So let's start with acquisition of your sample and isolation uh, of uh, isolation of tissue. So we have a primary source of your rat, and then we need to get the cells for your skin, and then for your kidney. So in this case, pade natin kunin si kidney, tatanggalin natin to sa. Okay, we need to remove this one and then transfer this one to your petri plates. And then you have this one. Uh, you have your sterile petri plate, tapos andito na yung kidney, for example. Then next will be dissection and or uh, disaggregation using a mechanical disaggregation. So, pwedeng collecting cells that spill out when tissue is sliced, pwedeng scraping and or spillage, pwede kang gumamit ng scarpel, tapos scrape mo siya, pwede rin pressing the dissected tissue through series of sieving using a siever. So, kung wala kong idea about siever, pwede nyong i-visualize yung siever na ginagamit natin sa parasitology. And then, forcing the tissue fragment through syringe, ayan, pwede din yung class, and or yung pinaka-common talaga, pipetting repeatedly. Ito, ito yung talaga yung pinaka-advisable. Why? Because with this procedure, mas less yung destruction ng cell. And next, after that one, pwede mo na siyang isid into culture vessel. Yung tinatawag na culture vessel naman, class. And pabida na naman si virology. Yung culture vessel naman, class, is the petri plate. Yan. Culture vessel yung tawag natin dyan, class. And then, incubate mo siya at 5 degrees Celsius, yung sinabi ko kanina. Tapos, depending on the virus, kung 37 ba siya. For influenza, the... Uh, for influenza, yung pinaka-optimum temperature natin is 33 degrees Celsius. For other viruses, 37 degrees Celsius. And then, after that one, we need to check for the culture flask for contamination and confluency. For contamination, yung pinaka-common na contamination natin dito class is you have your bacteria and then you have your Funzai class. Okay? For confluency, okay, pag sinabi natin confluency, it's the term used when confluent, yun yung term. It means that the cell is confluent already. Yeah, papakita ko na lang class. Mayroon kasi siyang i-describe. So for suspension, cells are suspended in liquid as single cell or as free-floating clamps of a few cells. To passage, Suspension cell cultures as a proportion of the cell in culture are diluted in a larger volume of medium. Alam sir, may bagong term na naman sir, passage. Hindi yan siya passage, passage. So the passage class, in that's the term used in virology. Pero ang term 
na equivalent niya sa bacteriology class is subculture. Ayan, pabida kasi yung virology class. Subculture. Subculture pagdating sa bacteriology, passage naman pagdating sa virology. Ayan, so later pa i-explain ko yung pag-perform ng passage. So, ito yung sinabi ko anina about confluency. So, how covered the growing surface appears. So, for example, in this case, madaming space. So, therefore, hindi pa yan siya confluent. Okay, the problem with confluency is subjective. So, therefore, you as a medical laboratory scientist will evaluate subjectively kung ilang percent na yung uh, confluency niya. Yes. For example, for me, this is around... 40% confluency. So, antayin ko muna na maging confluent siya in order for me to perform passage. So, the optimal confluency for moving cells to a new dish is 70 to 80%. Take note with this one class. Paki-highlight. Hindi ka pwedeng mag-passage pag hindi aabot ang confluency mo 70 to 80%. For example, in this picture, ito around 80 to 90% na yung confluency. So, therefore, you can actually perform Passage. So, passage number, the number of times the cell have been removed, kung yun nga sabi ko kanina, uh, the term used for bacteriology is subculture. So, ika, ilang, ilang mo siyang na subculture or na passage. So, dapat nakalagay din yung class. For example, this one. Naka five times na passage siya. And you need to always write this one on your plate or flash as P number. So, as e-virologies in the future class, you need to at least, you know, consider cell culture lines that are uh, required for passage. Kasi may mga cell culture lines na dapat uh, once or twice lang siya pwede passage. Kasi kung ipapassage mo sa more than twice, or thrice, what will happen, it will uh, change the morphology of your cells. Meron din tayong mga cell lines that requires 20 to 50 passage. Meron din tayong cell lines later after this slide continues. So it means you can actually do multiple numbers of your passage. So for uh, passage that only recur once or twice, uh, these are example class of your cell culture lines. So you have your human embryonic kidney cells, rapid kidney cells, primary monkey kidney cells, uh, you have your uh, cyanomalgus monkey kidney cells, African green monkey kidney cells. And then for diploid cell line or low passage cell line, must have at least 75% of the cell with same karyotype as the normal cell which they are derived. So you can actually perform this one 20 only up to 20 to 50 passages. So, more than 50 passages can actually change the karyotype of your cell, making the cell different already. And an example will be human unital lung at saka human diploid fibroblast, derived from human kidney or lung fibroblast. Yun. So, the difference with the two glass is that for... Uh, for passages that only require once and or twice, ito yung mga cells that coming from animals. Cells that are coming from uh, origin of human cells, so pwede siyang 20 to 50 passages. We also have heteroploid or immortal cell lines. Ito naman yung tinatawag na continuous cell lines. So more than 25% of cells have abnormal karyotype compared to normal cells, then frequently derived from malignant tissues or other transformed cells. And they undergo continuous unlimited subculture passage. Ayan, class unlimited. So, nakailang passage ka, okay lang. Bakit? They are continuous cell lines and or immortal cell lines or cancer cell lines. Example, you have your HeLa cells. HEP2 cells, KB cells, A549 cells, at saka Vero cells. Among these um, culture lines class, I uh, usually use the A549 cells for my influenza.
So again, additional loads in inoculated cell culture should be incubated at 35 degrees Celsius to 37. It depends on the virus, as I mentioned in the previous slide. If you are, if you want to identify and culture your influenza, and the optimum temperature is 37, uh, 33 degrees Celsius, 37 naman pag a majority of your viruses. For yeah, example, HIV, but then uh, coronaviruses to 37. Siya. Respiratory viruses, the optimal temperature ay nakasulat pala class 30, 33 degrees Celsius. That is the reason why uh, influenza usually latch to your nose because the temperature of your nose is different from the temperature of your nose is different from other parts of your body. It's much, it is quite lower compared with your body temp. And then incubated for two weeks, 14 days. Okay, my, uh, some of the viruses uh, requires only seven days, so it depends on the virus class. And then recovery is variable depending on the virus type, as I mentioned it also earlier. For culture, examine for CP using face contrast microscopy. So if you will try to identify uh, CPE, you need to have a control. So by control, cell ka, meaning walang virus. So, intact yung cell. So, at least meron kang reference na this is the uh, normal cell appearance. So, therefore, when you will try to compare that one to your uh, test cell with virus and then merong changes in our destruction, then you can actually record the CPE. On the next slide, I will show you how to grade your CP or cytopathic effect. So, again, class, uh, aside from cell destruction or lysis, Examples of your CP include cell rounding, clamping, baculation, granulation, pending giant nucleated cells that includes your inclusions, and fusion or sing cell formation. So these are typical examples of your CPE. CPE for your uh, herpes simplex virus 1, this one, and then sing sing formation, ito, multiple cells inside. So, isang cell na lang siya. This is a typical characteristic of your respiratory syncytial virus. But then, cytopractic effect din ng measles like this one. So, shrinkage naman ng cell mo. So, CPE, so CPE is actually uh, have a mode of reporting. So, we have quantification and interpretation. So again, class, this one is subjective. So therefore, as a medical laboratory scientist or a virologist in the future, you need to have a good uh, set of protocol first and then a good eye to evaluate kung ilang percent yung CP niya. So for example, an infected monolayer siya, which is comparable to your control, then you have your negative. A typical alteration of monolayer involving new a few cells, so equivocal. If you have an equivocal result class, what we usually do is that we reseed it again to another cell culture lines and observe it again for 7 days or 14 days. And then if the CP has 1% to 25%, that's 1%. 25 to 50%, 2, per, uh, two plus. 1% uh, to 25%, ulitin ko class, parang mali yung sinabi ko. 1% to 25%, 1 plus. 2 plus, 25, 50%. 3 plus, 50%, 75%. 76%, 100%, 4 plus. So ito yung grading natin for quantification of your cell culture, CP. So, the quantification of your cell culture CPE actually directly proportional to the number of your virus. So the higher the quantification reporting of your CPE, the higher the number, possibly the higher the number of virus present in the cell culture. So we are now done with your cell culture line. So we'll move to a special technique called your cell file centrifugation enhanced virus detection or you have your SVCE. So it's a centrifugation of the specimen into virus viruses, sensitive cell grown on cover sleep at the bottom of cell vials. So what we usually do is that we have a cell culture. So let go na lang dito class. So you have your cell culture. Ito yung cell culture mo. Tapos kukunin mo yung cell culture mo. Either by pipette, kukunin natin ito class. Pakit naman ang pipette ko. 
Yun yung pipette natin, class. Tapos, ita-transfer natin siya dito, class. And then, in this part, meron siyang cover sleeve. Tapos, ilalagay natin siya sa centrifuge. Tapos, pag nag-spin na siya with the centrifuge, the part of this one will actually attach to the cover sleeve. And then, after that one, you can actually use uh, stains. And then, we can observe that one in the microscopy. Produce more rapid result, incubation decrease from 1 to 5 days, depending on the virus. And then, low speed centrifugation enhances spiral infectivity. So, if you are done with your histopathology, this is somewhat the same with your cytospin principle. Hindi ko alam kung nakapag uh, histopathology na ba kayo. Kung wala pa, din antay na lang natin. Kung ano, uh, tapos na at least, you can review the principle of your cytospin for you to understand the shell file centrifugation enhanced virus detection. So, after incubation, cells are fixed with the use of your fluorescein labeled monoclonal, polyclonal, and abanese added. So, the difference between mono, so isa lang, poly, meaning madaming antibodies added. Uh, the principle is explain your serology. So please uh, refer to that one. And then detection of antigen or antibody binding and viral gene products or antigen are detected by CPE. And then uh, you can observe the this one. Bakit kasi gumamit tayo ng fluorescein label naman? So, this one is positive. So, your SVCE originally developed to detect your cytomegalovirus, which is the causative agent of your kissing disease. We'll discuss that one pagdating natin sa DNA viruses. Commercially available for herpes simplex virus, virus zoster virus, adenoviruses, and also not Although not commonly used for influenza A and B, but can can be used for uh, speeding up the isolation of your influenza viruses. And now we are on the last part of your uh, laboratory diagnosis for viruses, and that is your viral serology. Just a disclaimer that I will not thoroughly discuss this one because you have a separate course which is immunoserology and that subject is the best uh, environment for you to learn the principles but now with this one I will just touch the uh, basic of serology pagdating sa medical virology. So it detects immune status and make diagnosis of infection in situation in which the virus cannot be cultivated and cell culture. The problem with virology is that uh, either the virus is difficult to culture and or if the virus is culturable, it records time. So pagdating sa laboratory, it would be very difficult for the physician to manage the patient if kung hindi natin alam kung anong causative agent or anong type of viral agent. So what we usually do, we use your viral serology. So either we use your antibody to identify if the uh, patient produce antibodies against specific uh, causative agent, in this case, virus. Okay, and can be used to diagnose primary or reinfection or secondary infection. Okay, the specimen uh, requirement for serology, as I mentioned in the first part of this uh, discussion class, is serum and or plasma. And criteria for diagnosing primary infection, so it should have, of course, presence of your IgM antibody and then the seroconversion. Later, after this one, I will show you the seroconversion where uh, there will be less IgM and then increased IgG concentration. So this is a typical serologic profile after acute infection or primary infection. So criteria for diagnosing the infection or secondary infection, it should have a fourfold or more increase in titer of your IgG or total antibody between acute and convalescent uh, sera. So if you can observe, if kung wala tong red na part, class, kung wala tong red na part, and then you have this IgM, and then increase yung IgM, that's your primary infection. But in this case, with the absence or light, slight decrease in your IgM and increase uh, concentration of IgG, this signifies 
that there is a reinfection already. So, ano ibig sabihin ng reinfection? The patient actually had uh, had a infection before. Therefore, the body is uh, able to respond it faster by producing IgG. Class switching is a uh, term used uh, for the IgG to IgM. Uh, so, the class switching will be discussed. I hope it is discussed in your immunology. And examples of your viral serologic tests, so that includes your complementary fixation tests, enzyme link immunosorbent assay or ELISA, indirect immunofluorescence, and western blotting. These serologic tests are well explained to your immunology and serology. So, I will... Uh, endorse this one to your professor and at least uh, you know the basic principles of your uh, serology. But don't worry, pagdating naman sa question or sa exam, I will not ask questions with the principles of your serologic test. Bakit hindi naman immunoserology yung subject natin? Ayun sa class. And then, I hope that you learn a lot with your immunoserology because uh, if you will try to master that one, it would be easier for you to understand and love more the infectious disease because immunology and serology is the bridge of all. So, sabi nga nila, pag na-master mo daw yung immunoserology, mamamaster mo na yung iba. And that's it. We're done with our specimen collection and laboratory diagnosis for your viruses. Again, so if you have some questions and or clarifications or gray areas about this topic, please don't hesitate to contact me. And again, I know that uh, the presentation is a combination of uh, a lot of uh, references that I get uh, from Mihon. I also get from Henry's content. Share this also and then uh, Bailey's and Scott. So again, to address the difficulty pagdating sa quiz, please just refer Mayhon uh, as your main reference and then this PowerPoint. So I'll be getting the questions for references with this PowerPoint and Mayhon only. And thank you. And I apologize again for the technical errors happen with the video lectures for this week. And then uh, good luck with the tremors, and then we'll meet again after you finish everything uh, with your intrams preparation and everything. So thank you, class, and then uh, see you on the next video lecture, which is uh, viruses, and we'll discuss. We'll try to discuss your group one Baltimore's classification. Ja, it's karisamades.